I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, with joy in my mouth this morning or this afternoon. So as we go into our praise and our worship, we just want to give God all of the praise and all of the glory. Think of where you could be last week from here, a year from here. Doesn't he deserve the praise and the glory? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. So on this first song, we're going to go around. We're going to greet. We're going to love on one another. We're going to enter into praise. We're going to enter into worship today because our God deserves the very, very best that we could give him. And all he wants is to see his children love him, adore him, and worship him today.
Oh, 
continue to praise the Lord. You may be seated, but let's just continue to keep in a spirit of worship. Leslie, just y'all just keep praying. Keep singing.
to the communion table today, you know, this is not just something we do as a church. Of course, we do it in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. But when we come to communion, it's not about tradition. It's about relationship. That's why we're doing it. We're reminding ourselves. God doesn't need to be reminded, but we're reminding ourselves of the sacrifice that was made so long ago so that you and I could stand here today and proclaim that Jesus is Lord over our lives. And so when we take communion, there's power in that communion. It's not just a rote thing that we do out of duty. There's power in what we do here today. There's power in being together. There's power in the body of Christ. There's power in what Jesus did for us. Amen? So when you take the bread today, it's not just a cracker. It's representation of the body of Christ, of what he did on that cross and the stripes that he bore so that you could be saved, so that you could be healed so that you can walk in power. So when you receive this body today, if you, if, if you need healing in your body, then you claim it. If you need deliverance in something in your life, then you claim it. This was a great, great sacrifice for God sent his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him would have eternal life. Well, I'm a whosoever today. How about you? And this is the body of Christ. And I'm not going to just take it for granted what he did for me so long ago. Because the power is available for me today. In what I need. In living my everyday, ordinary life. And and, and in that power, it makes my everyday, ordinary life extraordinary. Amen? So let's lift the bread. If you need healing in your body, then you receive it right now as you take the bread. Father, we just come to you and we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for the ultimate sacrifice that you paid on that cross so long ago. That you bore the stripes on your back for our infirmities, for our sicknesses, so that we could be healed, so that we could be delivered, so that we could walk in power today, God, as we take the bread, we receive the power. Say that as you take the bread. I receive the power. I receive the power. And if it wasn't enough that he was beaten and bruised for our transgressions, for our iniquities, for our sins, but his blood had to be spilt. You know why the blood had to be spilled? Because it's the ultimate sacrifice. In Genesis, it says, God says when when Cain killed Abel, he says, your brother's blood cries out to me. How much more does the blood of Christ cry out to God today? You see, there's power in that blood, and Satan knows it. And I want to tell you that when you receive the blood of Christ every single month when we come together, again, it's not something that we do out of duty. It's not something that we do out of tradition. It's something that we do out of remembrance because I got to remember what he did for me. I have to remember that so that I won't take it for granted. And it's the power of that blood that saved me from sin. It's the power of that blood that healed me. It's the power of that blood that got me from point A to point B. It's the power of that blood that gives me life today. And that blood that was spilled on Calvary so long ago still cries out to God. It's powerful. So as you take this today, do it. In memory of what Christ did for you personally, what he did for you personally, that he loved you so much that he would have gone to the cross for just you. Let's stay. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's praise him. Hallelujah.
such a good God. And the worship team did an outstanding job today. We thank them. Every week it just gets better and better. You guys are awesome. We appreciate you. Don't you appreciate them? Amen. Well, it's good to see you. I've uh, been gone a lot uh, this past week was able to go to uh, D.C., and um, we were just able to pray over the Capitol uh, and Congress and the Supreme Court and all the things that are going in Washington, D.C., and all the things that are going on. And uh, I was so encouraged. Uh, there are several prayer groups. I'll just give you a quick testimony. There's several prayer groups that have taken up residence between the Supreme Court and the Capitol building. There's a row of houses there, and there's at least three ministries that have bought houses there, and they pray there all the time. They have prayer ministries. That was really encouraging to me. How about you? There is also a group that the Capitol has a big lawn, and they have allowed this group to set up a permanent tent in Washington, D.C., and there's 24-7 prayer that goes on there. And anyone that comes to D.C. is allowed to go and pray, and, and they have it open. And I think that's an encouragement, you know, that God is moving in our capital. So keep praying for our government and, and for our leaders and for what God is doing in the United States. Pray for, pray, pray for unity. We need to continue to pray for unity for our country and take authority over strife and over division. I just got back from Sacramento this morning, actually this afternoon. It was about 10 to 12 when I touched down. And, hey, I still made it to church. How about that? So no excuses, right? We can all, we can all make it to church. Well, anyway, it was a wonderful time with uh, the Sacramento Victory Campaign and Brother Copeland spoke over California, and he said, quote, unquote, 
that we proclaim the California blessing and what God has, what, what the devil has meant for bad, God is going to turn it around and we keep praying and standing and we're going to see God move in California. How many of you believe that with me today? Amen. And it was just so wonderful being there. Art and Fran were there. They drove all the way up. So it was good to see them. And, and they had a, it was just a good, good time in the word. And, and at the end, they called us all the pastors up and especially the California pastors and prayed a blessing for us and, and, uh, uh, encouragement. I am so encouraged today. I am so encouraged today. If you're listening to the media that tells you that this country in our state is going down the tube. You're listening to the wrong thing. I'm telling you right now. You're listening to the wrong thing because God has not left us and God never leaves us. God never forsakes us and he still has a plan for the United States and he still has a plan for California. Amen? So let's keep praying and believing and I think we're just... We're right there. But anyway, so I always love going to the Capitol, and I got to, and I was kind of by myself this time, but I just went on ahead to the Capitol building, and I prayed over the office of governor and lieutenant governor, because when you walk in, who's been to the Capitol building? Anybody? Okay, so you know when you walk in, the lieutenant governor's office is to the right, and then you go on, the governor's office is to the left, and then on down is the secretary of state. And I just went in, and I I just laid hands and prayed over all of that. You know, they don't know who I am. I'm just doing my business, you know, and, and just praying around the grounds and stuff. And you know, what a, uh, oh gosh, what a calling California has. It really does. That's why the devil is fighting so hard. This state is called. Do you realize that in 1906 on Azusa Street, that the beginning of global Pentecostalism happened in L.A., California. I believe God's going to do that again. It, it's it's going to be a great awakening. Amen? So we have a lot to pray for. So that was just an exciting, exciting time. I just I know you guys enjoyed Pastor Brian Park last week. I always appreciate him. He always gives a good word and is my friend and comes in and... Um, encourages me. I want to give you an update about Pastor Ross. Uh, you guys know where he is. I can't really say publicly where he is, but you know where he is. But uh, anyway, he has two services. And uh, one is a traditional service, and the second is more of a charismatic service. And so they have their services on Friday because of where he is. They're clo- they, they work on Sunday. And so it, it You know, so their Sunday is Friday is the way that they do it. So he has two services. He said on the second service this past Friday, the Holy Ghost just showed up. And if you knew where he was, you would know that that's an amazing thing. You know, God can show up anywhere if we'll open up our spirits and allow him to show up. Amen? And so continue to pray for him because what he's doing is really important and he's making a difference. want to just encourage you uh, to pray for uh, uh, Leslie and Will and Billy and Charlotte. And you guys know that the date for Charlotte's surgery is June 19th. I'm still believing she doesn't have to have surgery. I'm still believing that she's totally whole. And we're going to pray for her at the end of the service today. And we're going to pray in faith. Amen. We know we serve a big God, right? We know we serve a big God and he can do He can do anything. Amen. Well, those are the announcements that I have for today. Just a lot going on and uh, uh, just been thankful to God that he's just so good. And, you know, we've been praying for so long for so many things. It's so exciting to see the answers of our prayers being played out and you see them on the news and you and you see things happening and God is such a good God. Amen? Well, we have a couple of birthdays today. Right, Julie? Why don't you go ahead and stand and tell us. Come on down, Patrick. <laughs> How old are you? 20? 
when did you get to be 22? When did you get to be so tall? My mom said miracle grow. Miracle, <laughs> miracle grow. It happens every time, right? Tina, come on down. Come on down. LaRonda's birthday's today, but she's not here, so. Okay, all right. A lot of June babies, that's right. Well, come on down and let's sing happy birthday. So, um, Julie, you want to lead us? Yes, use your mic. Thank birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear tina and patrick happy birthday to you how old are you tina really when did you get you're catching up with me girl <laughs> All right, let's stretch our hands out to Tina. We're going to pray for her. And so, Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over Tina. We thank you for her life, God. We thank you, God, for what she means to all of us. Lord, we just pray that this is the best year of her life, that this is a year of a supernatural healing, supernatural deliverance, nothing missing, nothing broken. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Best year of your life. Amen. You receive it? Okay, now let's pray for Patrick. If you'll stretch your arms out to him. Father, we just thank you for Patrick and for Patrick's life. He's such a blessing to all of us, God. We thank you, God, because we know you have a path for him. We pray that Patrick stays on the path and does not sway to the left or to the right, but keeps his eyes on you. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you would lead him and guide him and show him what you want him to do with his life. And, Father, we just thank you. We take authority over the enemy that would try to steal, kill, and destroy and pull Patrick off the path. And we say, devil, you can't do that in Jesus' name. And, Father, we just thank you and thank you for Patrick. In your mighty name, amen. Thank you. We love you. I can't believe you're 22. I knew him when he was this high, this high. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Oh, well. All right. Carol, are you ready? Amen. I remember, too, when Patrick was that little, not anymore. God is so good, isn't he? I just love him to pieces. Well, not to pieces, but I do. I tell my girl, I love you to pieces. I tell Julia, I love you to pieces. But I do love God so much, and I love Jesus. He's just so sweet, and, you know, you just got to get to know him. And I love that song they sang today. We need a fresh outpouring, a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need that anointing, and I just thank him for it. Well, I'm not supposed to say all that, I don't think. But anyway, motivation for tithing. Malachi 3.10, and I think I've read this several times, but I like it. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and test or prove me. And this says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that we will not be room enough to store it. Oh, I like that. You know, God wants to bless us, and he wants to pour out his, his spirit, and he wants to give us whatever we need, and all we have to do is just follow what he tells us, right? Let's bow our heads. I'm going to ask... Um, Pastor Sandy, if she'll ask God's blessings today, my offering.
I just say I appreciate Pastor Brenda so much? I love her to pieces. Well, not to pieces. I love you too. Okay, kids, you are ready to go. Oh, not yet? Okay. Julie's got double duty today. So, which reminds me, if, if you ever want to help out on something, please see us, because we could use some help, right? Because some of us have got um, triple duty, triple hats that we wear. All right. All right, kids, you can be dismissed now. There you go. And you can turn into your Bibles to 2 Timothy 1, um, 6 through 7. We're going to begin there today as the children are being, children are being escorted to Children's Church. All right, let's pray. Father, we just come to you. We thank you. We give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that it cleanses us, it changes us, it empowers us. And it makes us who we are supposed to be. In Jesus' name, amen. So 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 7, it says, I have, Therefore I want to remind you to stir up the gift which is, of God which is in you through laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And say that with me today. I have power, I have love, and a sound mind. So many Christians that I talk to, they operate from a place of fear. They pray from a place of fear. They live their daily lives from a place of fear. And we read very clearly here that God has not given us the spirit of fear and that fear is a spirit. And so when you begin to look at the scriptures, you know that God operates from a place of faith. So you cannot be in faith and fear at the same time. If you're in fear, you're not in faith. If you're in faith, you're not in fear. Amen? And it's up to you to decide which mode of operation you're going to be in. But let me give you a clue. God operates from the mode of operation of faith. Amen? Satan operates from a mode of operation of fear. So fear is really Satan's faith if you want to think of it that way. So when we are in fear, we are believing more what the enemy has to say than what God has to say. And we have to train our spirits, train our minds, train ourselves to tune out whatever the enemy is saying and listen to the word of God and to what God is saying. Amen? But it comes with some self-discipline and you really have to talk to yourself. But if you begin to understand that if you listen to the word and put the word on the inside of you, then it's in there. When we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we accepted the word of God. Uh, John chapter 1 tells us that, that the word became flesh and dwell among us. Jesus is the word. So when we accept Jesus into our hearts, we're accepting the word of God into our lives. And so the power of the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 and 5. It says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know the love, the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not too burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So do I have any overcomers here today? You believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he lives in you. He gives you the ability to overcome whatever it is that you're facing. And because he lives in you, then you have to train your spirit 
to operate from a mode of faith and not out of fear. Can you say amen to that? So we have faith on the inside of us. Say that with me. I have faith on the inside of me. And that faith has to be activated. When we decide to believe God in his word, then we're stepping out and we're receiving it. Second Peter 1, 3 tells us his divine, he has given us his divine power for everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. So he is giving you divine power. He has given you everything that you need. The only thing that we have to do is receive it, take it, and activate that divine power on the inside of us. So what does that look like? Well, if you're, you know, you're a Christian, you're a spirit-filled Christian, that divine power is living on the inside of you. It has to be activated. Number one, it's activated when we get into the Word. Number two, it's activated when we pray in the Holy Spirit. And number three, it's activated when we speak the Word. And so pray in the Spirit, uh, get into the Word, uh, make those Word deposits, and then speak the Word. And as we do that, we can see that the uh, divine power is activated in our lives. Second, uh, excuse me, Philippians 2.12 says, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now that doesn't mean be afraid of your salvation. What it means is in awe, in awe of what's been given to you. So work out your own salvation. That means participate, the Greek there, participate in your own salvation. The word salvation in the Greek is soteria. It means literally your eternal salvation. It means your healing. It means your deliverance. It means your prosperity. It means everything that you need, soteria. So work it out, participate in Well, to be born again, we participate in becoming born again by opening our mouth, like it says in Romans chapter 9, open our mouth, confess with our heart that Jesus is Lord, and what? You shall be saved. Well, the same process is for our healing. We open our mouth and proclaim that we are healed and we receive Jesus' healing. The same process for our prosperity. We open our mouth and proclaim and receive our prosperity. And I don't want to give you the impression that this is a magic wand or a special formula because it's not. But it's faith being activated. Faith being activated in our lives and it's going to happen in the supernatural before it manifests in the natural and your words and what you speak pull out the supernatural into the natural praise god and so that's why jesus tells us in mark 11:22, 23 and 24 to speak to the mountain and it shall be removed and cast in the sea what is he doing he's teaching us how to be an overcomer listen he knew that you were going to need to be an overcomer in this life this world is not easy it's a hard place to live and think about it for just a moment. What if you didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Or you're just a regular Joe. You just, you know, got born again last week. You didn't know. You don't know all these spiritual things. And it seems like life is hard. It is hard. It is rough. We do have an enemy that comes what? To only steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says that I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. And when we operate and activate the power that's on the inside of us that leads us to an abundant life. We have to speak to the mountains that are in front of us to be removed and cast into the sea. He's given us the authority. He's given us the power. He's given us the ability. Why are we doing it? Why aren't, Poke your neighbor and ask him, why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing it? A lot of people look at people like Oral Roberts and Kenneth Copeland and, and, and these great preachers of our time, Billy Graham, and, and they think, why? I want to be like them. I, I just wish I could be like them. I wish I could have the faith that they have. I wish I could do what they have. You can. God is no respecter of persons. 
That's what it tells us in his word. You can, but you have to speak the word. You have to pray in the spirit and you have to activate your faith and you have to, you, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to use you. Amen? So we have to activate what's on the inside of us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of you. That's a lot of power. And I just want to tell you, you ain't getting no more power. It's, you got it. God's not holding any power back from you. You got it all. All you got to do is stick your finger in the light socket and you do that by praying in the Holy Ghost. And when you do, then that power falls and you're strengthened and you become a spiritual giant. There's nothing that you can't do. Amen? So, but we get sidetracked by the enemy. He comes, wow, distraction, you know, things happen, things around us, circumstances that's why the scripture tells us so clearly we walk by faith and not by sight. We cannot be moved by what is happening around us. We have to be moved by the word of God, right? So we have to say amen if you agree with me. So we have to activate what's on the inside of us. We do. We get the choice. That's why you see some Christians that Nothing ever happens in their life. And then some Christians, all these wonderful, great, supernatural things are happening in their life. I want to be one of those, right? I want to be one where the supernatural stuff is happening. So what I do, I got to plug into the power, plug into the source, plug into God. So we have to activate. If you don't activate it, nothing will happen. If you don't pray nothing will happen. If you don't believe, then nothing will happen. And if you don't stand in faith, nothing's going to happen. God has set you here on earth on purpose so that, so that you could be someone that, that sparks the change. Amen. So that you could be the one do you know that most people that have done great things are just common, ordinary people? Common, ordinary folks, just like you and me. Do you know that President Lincoln failed the bar like two or three times? But he still became president. He suffered depression. He had to overcome depression. He had to overcome. He had to really dial in to God. He had great challenges. So many great people had great challenges. What are the challenges in your life? And maybe you don't feel the greatness, but I want to tell you today that if you have the power of God living on inside of you, you are great. Amen? Because God is great. You have that power. Say it. I have that power. And that's out of Acts, Acts 1.8. And it's that dunamis power. That explosive power. It's the power that turned this world upside down on the day of Pentecost. Y'all remember what happened that day? Jesus said, go to the upper room. He said it to about 150 of them. Go to the upper room. Go and pray. They didn't know what they were praying for. They didn't know how to pray. And, you know, after a while, when you're praying in your natural tongue, whether it be English, Spanish, Swahili, or whatever it is, right, you're praying for a little while, you run out of words, right? You run out of stuff to say. They prayed in the upper room. They just kept praying. They didn't know, God, send your power. I don't know. What did they pray? God, you told us to be here. Jesus, you told us to be here. Well, we're here, Jesus. We're awaiting. Here we are. When is it going to happen? Then all of a sudden, the heavens opened up, and then they saw like tongues of fire over the building. It came down. The Holy Spirit interjected this atmosphere and filled them, they began to speak with other tongues. They had so much power that they went out into the marketplace. So much boldness that Peter, who denied Christ three times, now was speaking boldly from the marketplace. People thought they were drunk. 
They were so on fire and full of the Holy Ghost. He said, no, it's too early for drinking. We're not here for that. We are filled. This is a prophecy that's coming to pass. This is what Joel spoke about. This is here who we are. We're speaking in other tongues because God has given us a heavenly language. And they turned, that first church, turned the world upside down. Or really, they turned the world right side up. Amen? That's the kind of power that you and I have if we will just activate it. So look at your neighbor and say, activate it. All right, so... Why am I talking about this today? Because I get frustrated. We got a lot of power on the inside of us. It's time we used it. Instead of sitting, what are we waiting for? You know, I used to have one year for my birthday, Pastor Ross bought me this real expensive pair of shoes. They were absolutely gorgeous. And I put them in the box and I put them up in my shelf, and I never wore them because I was saving it for a special occasion. And then a couple years go by, and I saw those shoes in, in, my, in my closet, and the Holy Spirit spoke and said, um, if you wait to wear those shoes for a special occasion, number one, they're going to be out of style, and number two, the special occasion's never going to come. I started thinking about it. I go, you know what? He's right. So I took those shoes down. I started wearing them. I started wearing them everywhere. I started enjoying it. I started activating what I had. Amen. You have something that's special. What are you saving it for? A special occasion? What special occasion are you saving it for? When someone's laid out in front of you and dying, and then all of a sudden you're going to activate your faith and start acting like a faith giant when God calls us to act like faith giants every single day of our life because he's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He didn't give you that power so you could just watch TV without being in pain. He didn't give you that power so you could stay secluded and keep it to yourself. He gave you that power so you could make a change in this world, in someone's life. Praise God. The other day I was on the plane and I had told my daughter, uh, my daughter-in-law, I said, well, I hope that when I get on the plane, because it was from D.C., to uh, Ontario. I said, well, I hope when I get on the plane, I said, I, I don't want to sit by a chatty Kathy. I just want to get on the plane. You ever feel like that? I just want to get on the plane and take a nap. I'm tired. I just want to get on this plane and take a nap. That's all I want to do. Well, this guy, he was in line behind me, and I knew he was going to sit by me. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And he was chatty, Kathy, chatty, chatty, chatty. He was talking to everybody. I was like, no, no, no. He sat by me. And he talked to the lady, and they're chatting, 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 chatting. Then he talked to me. And then we began to talk. And, and he said, well, what do you do? I said, I'm a pastor. What do you do? And he told me what he did. And, and we began to talk. And we began to, I mean, just within 10 minutes, he was telling me his life story. The Holy Spirit showed up. And he was so ready to receive God. What if I had shut down and not made myself available, even though I was tired, blah, blah, blah. You know, we tell ourselves that. But we still got to overcome that, right? And, make, and allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Well, he gave his heart to God, not on the plane, but I gave him my number, and I said, when you're ready, call me. And about an hour later after he landed in L.A., he called me. He said, I'm ready. And so he gave his heart to the Lord. You know, that people are hungry for God. They're hungry for what you have. We've got to activate that on the inside of us and speak it out and make a difference in this world and look at your neighbor and tell them to make a difference. So, you guys, it's up to us to grow the church. It's not up to me. It's up to us. I think a lot of times people expect me to do it. Maybe that's a misconception on my part, but it's up to us, not just me. Amen? 
It's up to all of us to bring into people, to witness, and to tell them. And listen, no one can tell your story like you about how God delivered you, how God saved you, and how God brought you out. That's attractive. Why? Because people are looking for answers. And so when I'm saying that, it's been prophesied many times that our church will experience an explosion. I have heard that so many times over the past 20 years. And I've been praying in a, a, quite a long time over the word explosion and what it means. And do you know that it's a rapid or spectacular expansion or bursting forth? That's what explosion means. There are four conditions that are necessary for an explosion. First, there must be a combustible material or substance that can uh, be burned to provide heat or power, or you could say a substance that can, that can be consumed to produce energy. That's what we got to have here for an explosion. It has to be suspended in the air at a high rate of concentration, or you could say the strength of density. There has to be an oxidant or a chemical agent that combines with oxygen, and there must be an ignition source or any event that causes fire or an explosion to an open flame or electricity. So now think about the day of Pentecost. What did they do? They obeyed what Jesus had told them. They went to the upper room, and then they prayed, and then they prayed, and then they prayed. Their prayers went up to God, so that is the substance, and it began to create heat, and it began to create power, and then it was suspended at a high rate of concentration or the strength of de uh, density. <laughs> And then it was combined with praise, not only prayer, but praise. It was combined. And then the ignition came when the Holy Spirit came and interrupted the atmosphere, and it exploded. The same God that did that is the same God that we serve today. And there is nothing too difficult for him if we will open ourselves up to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And as I was praying about an explosion for our church, because I think about it all the time. I don't know if you do, but I think about it all the time. I see every seat in this place filled in the name of Jesus at 2.30 in the afternoon. And I proclaim and declare that it's got to be 2.30 in the afternoon because everybody's going to know it's God, not us. Amen? Amen. But there's people out there that want to come at 2.30 in the afternoon. They want to sleep late, have brunch, relax, and come to church. Hey, that's fine with me, right? And God can do it. So look at your neighbor and say, God can do that. And you should be helping me pray for that. But I was, I was praying about that. The Holy Spirit began to speak to me about what conditions are necessary for an explosion of the church. There must be a combustible spirit or combustible material. And that is us. We have the power on the inside of it. Say that with me. I have the power on the inside of me. So we have the ability to cause and affect what happens. You can change your world by what you say and what you do and by praying in the Spirit. So we have that energy on the inside of it, on the inside of us to change our world. Suspension in the air at a high rate of speed is our prayers. Our prayers are powerful and concentrated and hit the target. You know, back in the day, we didn't know a lot about prayer. We just prayed. I'm talking about in the beginning days of, of even 50, 60 years ago. And we would pray what's called shotgun prayers. And we just pray it, and it would just go out there. And now we want to be more specific with our prayers. We want to target our prayers. We want to focus our prayers. We want to pray specific things in the Spirit so that it hits its target. 
So our prayers are powerful and concentrated and hit the target. They are accomplishing what we have sent them out to do. And as we pray, we're changing the atmosphere with our words and declarations. And so the oxidant or the oxygen is when we combine ourselves with the word. It's the substance we breathe. It, it, it makes us who we are. It allows us to be the people of God and God wants and the people that God wants us to be, be. And the ignition source for us is the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us and causes us to see outside of ourselves and see the world as God sees the world. Listen, it didn't take very many people to turn this world right side up. It was just a handful of people, a handful of believers, believing God, seeking God's face, allowing the Holy Spirit to work on the inside of them. Amen? But you're going to have to do something. Now, I know you're busy people. I know you got a lot on your plate. We all do. But we we can't be too busy to pray. We can't be too busy to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness will be added to us. We have to put him first. We have to. As a congregation and as individuals, we have to put God first. If we want to see great things happen in our life, how many of you want to see need some supernatural stuff to happen in your life? Raise your hand and wave at me. You need it supernaturally. Well, it only comes by seeking God first, and then all these things will be added to you. Amen? Listen, there's not programs, formulas. There's not any of that. I don't believe in any of that. There's, there's no program, magic wand. If you do this, this, and this, you get so many people to come to church. You know, and... I, I know people who do programs, and that's good. That, if that's what God's calling them to do, there's no judgment on our part. But I want to tell you how this place is going to get filled. It's going to get filled by us coming together, praying in the Holy Spirit, believing God and witnessing and allowing God to show up in our everyday lives, and people are going to come to us. That's how this place is going to get filled. You hear what I'm saying? And you can do it. So look at your neighbor and say, you can do it. You can do it. So when people prophesy over an explosion, there's nothing that is keeping us from the power and the energy of an explosion. Nothing except us. All the conditions are here. (laughs) Everything's on the inside of us to produce an explosion, to do something that no one else Uh, has done or go in a place where no one can move. Are you excited about Word of Life? Are you excited about coming to church? Are you excited about what God is going to do? Listen, there's a lot. How many of you speak to the homeless guy that sits out front? I speak to him every single Sunday and ask him to come in. One day he's going to come in here and he's going to get saved and delivered. I believe it. Why? Because we have to be excited about what is on the inside of us because it's life changing so i go back to my friend on the plane he cried within 10 minutes that was the holy spirit why did he tell me because it was a god setup amen don't you want god setups in your life it was a god setup he cried and told me some things i told him that God had a plan for him. Then I just started prophesying. I've never done that before. I just started telling him stuff. It just started coming out of my spirit. And in my head, I'm like, what are you saying? But it was coming out. I told him some things that that only he and God knew. I sure didn't know him. And he looked at me like, how do you know that? God told me. The Holy Spirit is telling me. This is what the Holy Spirit... Listen, it's time for us to be bold with our faith. Amen? And just tell people, hey, like John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven is nigh. Repent and get saved. We're to that point, folks. We're here. And so make yourself available Pray in the Holy Spirit. Why do you have the Holy Spirit if you never pray in the Holy Spirit? 
Why did you get the whole, why, why, why? Right? Why? You need to activate the power that's on the inside of you. You faith giants, you. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a faith giant. So get in the word, pray, make yourself available. Allow the Holy Spirit to work. Hebrews 12, 28 says, for our God is a consuming fire. Listen, I've been serving God for a long time. I've never burned out. I've never burned up and I'm not about to. You know why? Because he is everything to me. Amen. Amen. I got to put him first every single day of my life. You got to put him first every single day of your life. Not thinking that you're all that. I'm just going to say this. We can't think ever that we have arrived and we don't need to pray and we don't need God because that's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen? We need God. I need him every day of my life. I've got to have him speak to me. I need his relationship. I need his guidance. I need his voice. I need his word. I need his spirit. I need everything. Oh, I personally have a lot of mountains in front of me. I got to have God. What about you? You got some mountains. It comes with spending time with God, speaking to those mountains, and they'll be removed and cast in the sea. So God is our consuming fire. It's the power. It's the fire to blast out sin in our lives. It's the power to blast out fear and give us boldness. It's the power to protect us. It's the power to change us and go from glory to glory to glory to glory. That's the power. It's the power to purify us. It's that fire that burns away the garbage and gets us. And gets us to get rid of those things in our lives that hold us back. So what's the process? Well, the process is you've got to ask Jesus into your heart. And make Jesus not only your Savior, but the Lord of your life. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Secondly, you've got to have, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Allowing the Holy Spirit on the inside of you to come out and on you. In John 7, 38, it says, Whoever believes in me... As the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from them. Some of you have dammed up your living water. And you need to open the floodgates and let it pour out. Amen? There has to be a purification. In other words, we have to let the fire of God consume us. Isaiah 15. Isaiah 55, 8 says that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, our thoughts and our ways change to God's thoughts and God's ways. It consumes us. The Holy Spirit consumes us in our thoughts, consumes us in our actions. It consumes us every waking moment of the day. And we allow the Holy Spirit to consume us so we change. We make a choice not to be the same people we were and make a choice to be different. So we have to pray in the Holy Spirit. Too many people are praying from a place of fear, and we have to pray from a place of faith. Amen? And fear has crippled too many people in the body of Christ. And God wants to set you free from fear once and for all. Think about it. The devil wants to keep you in fear, to keep you bound up, to keep you crippled, to keep you from moving into what God has for you. How do I know this? Because I was one of those people a long time ago. But Jesus set me free. Amen. Amen. I had a fear of public speaking. I had a fear of being in front of people. The first time I sang in church, I hid behind the piano and my knees were knocking. I was hoping no one would see me. I'm pretty sure my voice cracked, right? 
So we have fears. We have silly fears like that, or we have fears of uh, 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 what we think might happen or could happen. Listen, the bottom line is God did not give you a spirit of fear, and you've got to take authority over that spirit. Amen? So let's stand to our feet, and we're going to do that right now. Are you all with me today? It's sad, the Christians that are crippled by fear. That's sad. That's, I, that, that's not a place you want to be. So let's say this together. I am bought with the blood of Jesus. Therefore, I have authority to take authority over fear in my life. Fear, you are a spirit and not from God. And I command you to leave in Jesus' name. I am free from fear. I pray from faith. And I pray a faith-filled prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all receive that? Let's tell, let's tell God how much we love him and pray in the Spirit. Let's pray in the Spirit. Lord, I just pray for each person that's here. I pray, Lord God, for a holy boldness. I pray, Lord God, for a holy witness in each person. God, that you will give each person here this week five people to witness to and to proclaim boldly the love of Jesus Christ. God, I pray, Lord, that everywhere they turn, there's somebody to talk to about Jesus. We thank you, God, that you have put word of life here for such a time as this. And we thank you, God, that... What we see is only temporary, but that you shall fill it up in the name of Jesus. You believe that? Amen. Amen. All right. So now what we're going to do is, um, Leslie, you grab baby Charlie, and let's come down to the front. Now, we're going to pray for her, and we're, I know you, a lot of you have already been praying for her, and we appreciate it. Well, I want you to come down, but I want you to pray from a place of faith, not fear. We're not fearful of what's going to happen. Amen? We know that God has a plan, and we're standing and believing, and we, we know that God has a plan for your life, Charlie. She's looking at me. Amen? All right, so come down if you're going to pray from a place of faith. Amen? Can y'all say amen to that? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the rest of you, you want to reach out your hands, you're able to. That is perfectly okay. So, Father, we just thank you right now. We plead the blood of Jesus over Charlotte. We thank you, God, that she is already healed in Jesus' name. Uh, Nicole, you pray over her real Pray over her. Here. Pray over her. Pray over her. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you for this congregation just coming together today to pray just your full, complete healing on Charlie right now, Lord, that her heart is completely healed and made whole in you, Father God. We praise you and we thank you for her little life, God, that through this healing, Lord, that she will be able to just touch others and that she will be able to just give this spirit of healing that was on her, just that inspiration for others to seek you, Father God that you're going to do big things with her life, Lord. And we just thank you and we praise you, God, for what you have in store for her, Lord. We thank you for this complete little life that is made completely whole in you, Father God, that she is healed from anything 
in life, Lord, that no sickness, nothing will ever come upon her, Lord, that when she is healed, she is healed completely and wholly in Jesus' name. And we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, together as a congregation, Lord. In your holy name, Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, Nicole. Just to let you guys know the reason, Holy, you can be seated. The reason the Holy Spirit asked me to have Nicole pray because the enemy tried to kill Nicole several times, and uh, um, she and Harold had to stand in faith and believe God, and and uh, she knows exactly how to pray. Amen. Amen. So next week. We're going to talk about healing next week. So invite somebody that needs to be healed, whether it's a physical healing, emotional healing, or mental healing. But let's everybody invite at least two people next week. Can you guys do that? You promise? Okay. So invite two people, even the ones that you don't think will say yes. You know, invite them anyway. Don't make that decision for them. Give them the choice. Amen? Amen. God is so good. He's got great things for you. He really does. And I encourage you to pray. If you don't pray a whole lot, start with five minutes a day. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Just five minutes. Just start with that five minutes. And then God will add to it. Amen. And as you pray, you're going to get stronger and stronger. If you're a regular prayer, you know, Pray at least 30 minutes a day in the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to lead you, to guide you. You need the Holy Spirit. Is anybody here that is not baptized in the Holy Spirit, that wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Anybody? Okay, I I see some fingers pointing, but okay. Start praying about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need it. You need that power. Amen? Amen. Don't you want to have a supernatural life? I do, right? Isn't that exciting? Have that supernatural life. All right, so we're going to close in prayer right now. Pastor Lewis, you want to stand and close us in prayer? Love you guys.